Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Jim Harshore Jr. who is in Virginia, I believe. Yeah, correct. Charlottesville, yeah. Virginia. My wife is from San Diego. We love it out there. Oh, okay. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not, as you can probably tell by my accent, I'm a bit of a transplant, <laughs> um, you know, originally from Ireland. But yeah, we love it here as well. And what we're going to talk about is success um, through failure and, and uh, achieving success by learning uh, about and learning from your failures. And one thing, um, you know, Jim, uh, who went through, uh, went through college, was a, was a college wrestler, failed multiple times to win the championship, but finally got there. Uh, and then in your TEDx talk, you talked a lot about, uh, you know, how you teach your children to fail. And that might seem like uh, that might seem like a strange thing to do with your kids because we're always trying to pump them up. Mm, um, right. But your experiences and what you teach people today as a high performance coach is um, learning through failure. So when you say teaching your kids to fail, what do you mean exactly? Well, I, you know, it's funny. You know, I'm not actually teaching them like, yeah, go crash your bike yeah. into the into the woods, you know, go crash your mm -hmm. bike or go go fail your math test. But I am encouraging them to find things that are hard uh, and learn from the failure. Right? I just had a client actually just a, a few days ago on the phone as we're setting working on setting his goals for 2021. He said uh, and, and this this proves to me like it's sinking in to him and, and others who I get to coach. And he said, I want to find the next thing I can fail at and go after it. He wanted to find that next thing, that next big, exciting, scary thing for him that he can go and fail at because he, he just knows that failure is data, failure is information, failure is going to help him learn. And it's the same with our kids, right? And, you know, mm -hmm. for my kids, I teach them like, you know, when they're learning how to ride a bike, like you fail all, all along the way, you fail, right? You have to get on your bike and try riding your bike and crash your bike a few times yep. before you can actually find success. So, Success is on the other side of failure, no matter what it is that you want to do. We look at people like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, mm -hmm. and we just, we see the end product, or at least what the end product is as sure. of today. And we think that that was inevitable. It wasn't. It was through multiple failures and setbacks that they actually got there. They're, the end was not inevitable. It was just mm -hmm. only through failure, through trying things that were hard and scary and failing that you can actually build something that's meaningful and worthwhile. Yeah, and I think it's interesting because you're correct. I mean, today we look at all these overnight successes who rarely are overnight successes, but that's the way they appear to us. Or we just look at all this success and we don't take, we don't look, uh, we don't pull back the curtain and look at the process um, to get there. And one of the things that kind of interested me is, okay, so if we go back to your college wrestling days, uh, so you were in your final year, you had your one last shot at, at, at winning the title. And you stepped onto the mat to face somebody who was, I think, ranked number four, if, I'm, if my memory serves right. me correctly. Yeah. And you had never beaten somebody in the top five and you had failed in all those previous years. So at that moment, what, what, what did you draw upon from those failures that allowed you to succeed that particular time? So it was, it was a great question, John, because this this moment was this this really unique moment for for me and a trend, you know, definitely a transition point in my life. And what, so what I carry into that moment was was not only the failures. So you learn from these failures, right? These struggles, these setbacks. And and for for the listener uh, and who wants to go back and and you know listen to that TEDx talk, you can just Google my name and TED mm -hmm. talk, and you'll find it. But I talk about these failures that led up to that. I talk about this, this moment in my junior year at the end of my fourth, my third year in college going into my fourth year where I, I had failed yet again. And I sat there in the locker room with my face buried in a towel in tears, wondering like, why can't I do this? What's wrong with me? Am I not good enough or smart enough or capable enough? And I, I can't run more miles or lift more weights or watch more film. Like there's not enough hours in the day. And I know for for the entrepreneurs and the salespeople mm -hmm. listening right now, like you felt that same, maybe you feel that same way right now. Like I can't possibly do anymore, Jim. I'm doing the social media. I'm making the phone calls. I've got my CRM. I've got, I've got all this stuff and, and it's just not working. Like for me, I had to get to that moment, that deep, dark moment of failure for me to learn what it was 
that I was missing. And, and certainly the failure, you learn more in failure than you do sure. in success. I learned more in wrestling matches uh, from matches that I lost because those exposed my weaknesses, which I could then work upon and, and improve. Um, but also in that, that deep, dark moment, something great came out of that. And it forced me to realize that, Jim, you can't actually control the outcome. You control the process. Like I control, you know, the food that I put into my mouth, what time I go to bed, if I watch film, uh, do I show up early and stretch out before practice? Do I stay late and go over some extra stuff with coach? Uh, do I rehab my injuries? Like those are choices that I can make, Yeah. but I don't control the outcome. And whenever you, tr whenever you let go of the outcome, uh, you know, start with the end in mind, which, you know, seven habits of highly effective people. We've mm -hmm. heard that before you start with the end in mind, but then you focus on the process, not the outcome. And once you let go of that end and you focus on that process, then failure is just irrelevant. It's mm -hmm. just part of the process. It's something that, that I can, uh, I can learn from. And, and so I carried that into this match. Actually, that was my, my journey of the, uh, you know, to expand upon that story, which I didn't have time in that TEDx talk. It was a short seven minute one. So sure. it's kind of easy to consume for the, for the viewer or listener. You can easily watch it, but, but there's a story in there that I, that I don't get to share about this journey throughout the off season, going from my junior year to my senior year, where I, I, I went on this journey of, of figuring out what is it that I'm missing? Am I not strong enough? Do I have to get in better condition? What is it that I'm missing? And I, I come to a moment the night before the season, the next season starts. And I realized I never figured it out. Like I never figured out that thing that I'm missing. Yeah. And I went into my competition the very next day thinking like, I give up. I gave up on the outcome. And I said, I'm mm -hmm. just gonna, whatever I can do, I can do. Uh, I'm going to give it my everything. I'm going to be all I can possibly be in these matches. And if I win, great. If I lose, I, I can put my head on the pillow knowing that I've done everything that I can possibly yeah, do. Yeah. And once I finally put that weight of success, trying to achieve success down, and I allowed Jim to fully be Jim, and I want the entrepreneur and the salesperson listening to, mm -hmm. to pay attention. It's like, once you allow yourself to be fully you and, and stop striving for that thing, that, that outcome, that thing that you want to have, and you just fully allow yourself to, to be present and to be fully you and let go, then your greatness arrives. And that's how it happened to me in that moment, the night before the very first competition. And I went out and I, the next day I went five and oh, I dominated the competition. I had more fun than I had mm -hmm. ever had before in my life. And I carried that with me throughout the rest of my season ended up on the podium at the national championships and uh you know i lived happily ever after i'd love to say actually i lived happily ever after but uh we can get into the story if there's time but i, I end up kind of going down to the same yeah i had this sort of string of successes in the real world mm -hmm. you know and i was the youngest division one head wrestling coach in the country i was an olympic hopeful and got to train at the olympic training center and two degrees from a great you know, the number one university in the country, uh, public university in the country at the University of Virginia, and, mm -hmm. you know, got out of coaching, got into business, and that was a success, but started my next business. And um, I ended up broke and broken, like, and literally broke, you know, dead up to my eyeballs, you know, not spending enough time with my wife. So that relationship was on the rocks and not spending enough time with my kids and in the worst physical shape of my life. So I ended up in that, that, that deep, dark moment that I ended up in the locker room after my junior year, I ended up there again in the real world. And I realized, um, again, through this, through this, this trial that, you know, there's a process for success yeah. and there's a process, there's a framework that was in place in my life when I was competing that I didn't have in place in my life in the real world. And once I recreated that, it allowed me to deal with failure, deal with setback, deal with adversity, learn from it and be better for it. And, you know, I ended up tripling my income and healing my relationship with my wife, most importantly, and spending more time with my kids and, um, you know, got to build this business that I, that I get to, to do now. Yeah. And it's fascinating. There's just a couple of things that I just wanted to pick up, pick up on that are really fascinating. So obviously you have to have a goal in mind, so that's fine. You have the end goal. But then, as you said, it becomes about the process. And it also, I think what we live in a very impatient world, right? Where everybody's looking for shortcuts and instant success and all of that. But what you've described here is it really comes down to step by step, right? It's the next best step, right? Every time it's the next best step and really committing to the process. And as you said, not, not worrying so much about or focused on the outcome, but going through the process, because if you execute the process, the results will come. That's it. You know, so many people, 
you know, there's the, the do have be mindset, right? If I, if I do the thing, then I will have uh, the thing that I want. And then I will eventually, I will become that entrepreneur or that salesperson or wealthy or whatever the case might be, mm -hmm. but it's the other way around. It's not do have be it's be do have, you have to be mm -hmm. that person first. So for me, I had to become that all American wrestler first. Yeah. Then that would allow me to do the things at the level that I needed to do them. So then, then eventually at the end, then you have, right. And so, mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's quite, you know, a lot of people kind of approach that the wrong way. And when you um, and when you reach that second point uh, where things weren't going you going your way, what is it that you realized that you had forgotten from your original like success and and what what was it that was holding you back? Because I mean that's a fascinating story because people often think oh well you crack the code on success you crack it forever but hey we're really good at forgetting things. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know they talk about you know the life lessons that you learn from sports. Well, I. I I had learned them in sport, but I never learned how to translate them into the real world. Right. And, and I realized there was this framework and there's like this four step framework. There are four things in place in my life when I was competing at the highest level that I had failed to implement into my life at this point. And, um, you know, and I'll, I'll reveal those kind of four steps here mm -hmm. in a second, but I, I implemented them into my life. And like I said, everything just changed in my life, you know, financially relationships, health, everything changed. And I was like, ah, oh, this is great. This is just a, a system that worked for me. And then I, you know, I gave the TEDx talk, I launched a podcast and I started interviewing like Navy SEALs and CEOs mm -hmm. and New York Times bestselling authors. I've had, you know, Tim Ferriss and Ken Blanchard and a lot of these amazing people on the, on the podcast. And, and I realized like, this isn't just a gym thing. This is like this universal framework for living a successful life and a balanced life. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's, you know, that's what I end up teaching and coaching now, but the four steps are number one. I knew what I valued. Like when I was competing, I knew nice. what my values were. I probably couldn't have stated them as core values like I can today. Sure. But I knew that I, I wanted to be like those people who I respected. They were my coaches and my mentors. They were, you know, tough people. They lived disciplined lives. They were respected. They often went on to success after sports. And so that was number one. I had these values, these things that I valued. And I, I was clear on those. And number two, <clears throat> I had goals that aligned with those values, aligned mm -hmm. goals. Because, you know, in the real world, most people have goals that align with what's parked in their neighbor, neighbor's driveway or what social media <laughs> tells them they should want or the mass media tells them they should want. Mm -hmm. But I had these aligned goals. They were perfectly aligned with what I valued. And, and then step three was I had what I call an environment of excellence. I had, you know, I certainly had coaches who kicked me in the rear end if I needed a kick, uh, picked me up and dusted me off if I needed that. Uh, helped me see my blind spots. Uh, I had a team, you know, teammates who, you know, I was accountable to them. They were accountable to me. Like we all had mm -hmm. this high standard for ourselves that we lived by. Like, and I was missing that in the real world. The other parts of the environment of excellence were, well, it's MAPS, maps. Just like you have to have a map to get from point A to point B. You have to know your maps to get from where you're at in life to where you want to be. So M stands for media. It's like, what is the media that you're allowing into your life or you should be filtering out of yeah, your life? When yeah, I was competing, yeah. I watched you know, and watch much TV. But when I did, I was breaking down film of my opponents or myself or watching the world championships. Um, that's the media. A is for area, like your physical space, your optimized space around you. Like I had my goals posted on my wall. I had posters of my heroes and up on my wall. Um, I had my training journal right at my desk, top right-hand drawer of my desk. I had healthy food and healthy snacks, like this environment I created. And I have that now today too, with the same thing with food and, and, you know, healthy, healthy food, healthy water. I've got a standing desk. I've got this optimized environment, right? P is for people, which I talked about the coaches. And then mm -hmm. also S, uh, M A P S S is for speech like that. The talk, the self-talk and the out loud talk yes. is a great quote. Um, it says, uh, if our mind is a supercomputer, then our self-talk is the program that's running it. So right. yeah. those, so, and, and I'll just, the last step. So, so the first step is core values. Second step is aligned goals. Third step is environment of excellence. And the fourth step, which most people miss John is you gotta have a plan to follow through because guess mm -hmm. what? Kids are going to get sick. Cars going to break down. Boss is going to throw stuff on your desk. Economy is going to go in the tank. A pandemic could happen. Like what's your plan to actually execute and follow through when this, not if this stuff happens, but mm -hmm. when it happens. So that's the four steps that have really, you know, transformed my life and, and all of my clients. Yeah. And there's just a, and there's a couple of things there that are just really fascinating to, to pick up on. Um, the one you say about, you know, creating the right environment and also what you allow into that environment, because I think today that's one of the biggest struggles people have is because there are so many toxic inputs coming from, from outside, if you let them. 
you know, whether it's the media, social media, all of those kind of things. So you have to be very careful about you have healthy snacks in your desk. It's great having healthy snacks, but if you're letting unhealthy stuff into your brain at the same time, you're, <laughs> you're kind that's of right. counteracting it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And you know, it, it's like, I use this thing. It's called Facebook newsfeed eradicator. Mm -hmm. When I go, if I have to go down to Facebook to post something in with my private clients group, I'm not distracted by this stuff. Like you just mentioned, that's going to pollute my mind and suck me in and, and steal my time by, by sucking me into Facebook. Right. So you have mm -hmm. to have, yeah, you have to have those, those guardrails in place for yourself. Yeah. And I like also what you said about the end there, about the fact is, um, you know, you have to have a plan. Um, but most of us build plans for the best case scenario. And then, as you said, when things come in from left field, it throws us completely off. But we have to expect and almost invite those things in because they're going to, in one way or another, they're going to, uh, you know, improve what we're doing because they're going to challenge us or they're going to really, again, really challenge us to, um, to find out, is this really what we want to do? Do we have the, the passion, the wherewithal, the commitment to break through the obstacles? That's right. It's, it's, it's inevitable. And, you know, when the more you dive into the lives of successful people, the more you realize, oh, okay, failure and struggle and setback and is it, just a normal part step on the path to success. I mean, we, we, we want to believe it was easier for them because it kind of makes it easier yeah. for us to go, oh, okay, well, they must have had it easy. They had, you know, the education or the money or the background or the network or the whatever, right? They had some mm -hmm. unfair advantage. Well, you do too. Yeah. No, and I think that's a really good point. And, and again, I think it's because people take a superficial look at, at things often. And as I said, it's people's success and, and, and all of that. And I think the other thing that you touched on there, and I think it's a good message as we go into the new year, is that the idea of actually having goals and writing them down is I do think that a lot of people sort of skip over that. It seems a little trite. It seems a little old fashioned or whatever. I, to be honest, I have mine here from 2020 on the wall um, awesome. and be putting them new ones. But I think that's so it's so critical and it's so simple, yet a lot of people don't do it. And second off, I think a lot of people don't really uh, examine the purpose, their purpose. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Yeah, yeah, they don't. I mean, most people don't hit the pause button long enough. They just, mm -hmm. as you know, they just wake up and do the same thing today because that's what they did yesterday and they're going to do the same mm -hmm. thing tomorrow for no better reason and that's what they did today like you hit the pause button john long enough to actually sit down and write out your goals for 2020 and you're going to do it again for 2021 mm -hmm. uh, you know after interviewing hundreds of guests on my podcast over the years i always ask them i say you know if there's one habit that you would most credit for your success what would it be and it's fascinating because for the olympic gold medalist it's never the training for the new york times mm -hmm. best-selling author it's never the writing for the right. you know billionaire investor it's never the investing it's always some version of like well i i uh, i do a retreat every year where i kind of review the year behind and i set my goals for the year ahead or once a week uh, i will sit down on sunday night and i'll kind of uh, plan my week or every morning i i plan my day or it's like meditation or a journaling or i work with a coach or it's all these things where it's like not doing it's actually mm -hmm. hitting the pause button and so yeah. I've actually coined the, the term productive pause and the definition oh of a productive pause is it's a short period of focused reflection around specific questions that leads to clarity of action and peace of mind. Like yeah, that's what that. we all want is clarity of action, peace of mind. Guess what? It doesn't come from waking up in the morning and jumping right on the treadmill and, and into the rat race and, and going, going, going. You actually have to pull back and hit that pause button. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I would add one more is um, absolutely put your goals up and put them right in front of you and put them physically up. I mean, because, yeah, I know we you live in a digital world, but there's something about physical stuff that holds the power. And the Definitely other thing I, I would always encourage people, I have I have my goals and I also have five things I'm grateful for, because, you know, something there are days when your goals seem far away when everything seems to be getting on top of you and just the reminder that you have a lot of things to be grateful for is sometimes the fuel that you need to refocus yourself and get yourself back in the game. Nailed it. I mean, you know, I have nothing to add to that. I mean, I guess like, <laughs> you know, and I just do, I'll, I'll add this. The fact for the listener and the viewer that John just said, like some days you feel like things are just on top of you and you can't get out of your own way or the universe can't get out of your way. Like, you just feel like it's so far away and it's a struggle. Like that is normal. Like 
you're mm-hmm. it's, it's a season it's a period it's temporary yeah. you're going to c- go through these highs and lows and just like when you get there if you're in that low moment right now or whenever it comes next week or next month like understand like you're in you're in great company yeah, I think that's a perfect. I couldn't say that better myself. Perfect. You're in great company. There's lots of other people, and guess what? You're in the company of greats who have been there, and and will. And as you said, when it comes to those kind of people, they'll probably do something else. So they'll probably be there again someday as well. That's right. Yeah. Well, listen, Jim, this has been fantastic. Uh, all of Jim's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, sure. I'm an executive uh, performance coach, and I work with uh, individuals and companies where you know, I'm, I'm working with sales teams. I'm working with individuals who want to find clarity in their life. They know there's another gear. They feel like they're leaving too much on the table. They feel like the clock is ticking and, and there's no time left to underperform. So if that's you, uh, then you can sign up for a free call with me. I do free coaching calls. That's just kind of kick the tires. You get to know me. And to be honest, I get to know you a little bit. A lot of my programs or, or group programs. So I got to make sure it's the right people who, um, who would interact mm-hmm. well with the group and, and also be able to get results. But um, that's just Jim junior.com slash apply again, Jim junior.com slash apply. Uh, if you actually you, you mentioned goal setting, um, I'm running a goal setting session, it's very limited, it's just 25 people that are in this group. Uh, and I'm recording that. So if anybody wants that recording, you can go to Jim junior.com slash 2021. Um, and it's uh, just a, a small paid program that I have for for a small number of people, uh, but the recording is discounted. And you can kind of do that whole session, whole goal setting planning session for 2021 uh, on your own time on demand. So it's, uh, it's on my website as well. Yeah, and I would really encourage people to check it out. Uh, one thing I often say here is I would encourage people to look at a mentor or a coach uh, because at the end of the day, nobody cares as much about your success as you do. You can't sit around and wait for people to invest in you. You have to invest in yourself. And maybe you need to just take a moment out and look at all the other things in your life that maybe you spend money on. Maybe you invest, maybe you have a hobby or a sport or whatever. Maybe you invest lots of time and money in that. It'd be a good idea to maybe invest a little bit of that time and money in the thing that puts bread on your table. So I would encourage you to go check out jimharsherjr.com. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Jim. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.